if a user were to say lost password, mm -hmm. it goes ahead and right here, it's just doing a quick fetch and then provides a step-by-step -step without the user ever even having to step into the knowledge base. And it it's reduced our tickets by over 70%, wow. which is a, a giant, giant reduction for us. Hey everyone, it's Daniel from Voiceflow. In this interview, we're talking to Winston who owns eSnipe.com and about 50 other websites. They've got about 2 million customers and he's gonna walk through how he integrated Voiceflow with his website to decrease the number of support tickets that they have and how he's planning to connect Voiceflow to the rest of his tech stack like Zendesk to increase the amount of complexity and tasks that it can handle for their support team and the rest of the company. Hey Winston, tell us a bit about yourself and what you built on Voiceflow. My name's Winston and I'm a developer, a web developer, and I help manage a team that works on eSnipe.com. eSnipe places bids on eBay at the very last second. We have a pretty large user base of around 2 million customers. And we originally started developing a voice flow bot. And while we were developing that and kind of getting used to voice flow, we decided that integrating it into our help center directly to help provide a little bit of AI assistance to kind of more naturally provide customers with information about our service and also to fill in the holes between some of the help articles that we've written. Uh, currently, we've loaded the whole entire website into VoiceFlow as a knowledge base. We actually have multi-knowledge bases because there are multiple sites, multiple domains. And so we kind of created a system to use the knowledge base query API. For additional context here, this is the API that Winston is using in his example. So it's called the Knowledge Base Query API. You can find it on developer.voiceflow.com. And in Voiceflow, every agent or every assistant comes to the Knowledge Base. So what he's done is he's uploaded his whole website to the Knowledge Base, and now he's using the Voiceflow Knowledge Base API to send a question to the Knowledge Base and receive an answer and display that on his website. And that allows us to, with one call, fetch a response to a, a user's question. So in the in the case, to give you an example, if a user were to say lost password, it goes ahead and right here, it's just doing a quick fetch and then provides a step-by-step -step without the user ever even having to step into the knowledge base. Obviously that knowledge base is, or the, the, the article itself is right here. And that's pretty much word for word there. Are, it also takes into account some of the other nuances within that article, mm -hmm. because it's saying, if you have access to your account, then you can go ahead and just log into your account and, and change your password within your account. Plus voice flows made it so easy. The. APR, the knowledge based query API is a simple get, or it's a post actually, I'm sorry. Just tell it to return an AI response and you can specify which uh, LLM you're going to use and all the different settings that you can do within your voice flow bot itself and within the knowledge base, all those same settings can be defined per call and it works really, really easy, really, really well. And we've really, it, it's done a huge amount for our support team. Mm -hmm. We've reduced our tickets. I did look. And it, it's reduced our tickets by over 70%, wow. which is a, a giant, giant reduction for us. So it also has allowed us to decrease our response times, of course, as well. So, but really it, it's a, I have developed a couple of scripts, Daniel, I'm, I'm going to give yeah. those to you and we'll link them up. And we're currently using Cloudflare. If you want, do you want me to show it? Daniel? Yeah, yeah. It'd be great. You're going to walk them through. Sure. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty simple. It's literally just a fetch it's just a fetch and it's quick and easy uh, i'm going to try to keep my i'll probably have to uh, <laughs> reissue those you know what i will just reissue those but basically these are all the settings and so for, all you have to do is kind of follow the prompt the different comments throughout the script this is where we're allowing for by domain knowledge bases you could actually break this out even more you can restrict the domains where the script can be called from hmm. you can sign up for cloudflare for free and use workers for free. Literally, you'll just paste this script in and then that's really about it. There is a little bit of JavaScript on the, the calling page, mm -hmm. but it's extremely simple. And like I said, it's, it's a, I mean, it has been a lifesaver for us. So, and we look forward to fully developing a, a full fledged bot. Those are just a little bit more complicated and uh, require <laughs> a little bit more time than uh, we, yeah. we, and, and to get the benefit out of voice flow immediately and with just a few hours of work, it was it was really worth it. That's awesome. Yeah. And 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 what are you thinking about next? I know you've been playing around with Voiceflow quite a bit. You've got this work on the website. What's like the dream or what are you kind of working towards? Honestly, we want to be able to move all of our support and everything into a chat. So being able to specifically do account lookup and 
tie in to previous support tickets. So what Winston is referring to here is the next stage of an assistant. So stage one is the easiest way to get started, where you've got a knowledge base like we've got here, got a bunch of our help documentation. If a user asks a question, we're able to provide them with the response. You should consider that to be the foundation of your AI agent. Where VoiceLook is really powerful and where it allows you to do is go to step two, where you start actually taking in a lot more context about the user based on what page they're on, their history, some of their account attributes, things that you have on your system. And so that's where VoiceLook gets really powerful. So you can see here in our own in-app assistant, we've got a couple things going on. When a user opens the assistant, we're actually able to pass in information about their account, who they are, how much they're paying, how much activity that they're doing in the app, um, and what page they're on, and start routing down different paths to give them access to certain features or push them into certain directions. From there, we're not just able to answer questions, but we're also able to take actions. So we can search our content and provide an answer. We can start doing things like token checkout, so being able to actually allow users to make in-app purchases, and so many more different options that are customized to your app. So this is really where the direction of uh, that Winston's going in as he's thinking about all the different things he can start to do with VoiceLow once he really integrates it into his system. Because we already have the Zendesk API running, we actually have that built into the accounts already within our site. So a user can see all their previous tickets that they've opened and all that kind of stuff. We have a plan to be able to implement that into VoiceLow. We want to be able to specifically per transaction, be able to identify if a customer has a question specifically about a specific transaction itself. We want to be able to have the bot answer that question in a friendlier way than the way we do it. We have a lot of error jargon type stuff that we kind of throw at the user that was written, you know, long story short, they don't, some people don't check their email. They, add, they want to get some help on it with a specific question. And we basically want to implement that across the whole board mm -hmm. and understanding, you know, if you have a specific question about a specific page, being able to provide the user with kind of a guide to be able to do something specifically mm -hmm. on that page. And so within their account and all that fun stuff. So that's kind of our long-term plan. Cool. Sweet. So well, I'm excited to see how you build this out. And yeah, Winston, thank you so much again for kind of walking us through this. For anyone watching, I will share Winston's script just to make sure you can kind of go ahead and implement this yourself. Uh, but yeah, Winston, thanks again. And is there anything that you want users to know, whether that's what does eSnipe do or, or anything you kind of want to... Sure. Yeah, eSnipe is, we've been in business since 1999. And it is, we have about, like I said, about 2 million customers. We place bids on eBay on auctions at the very last second. You can set the time that you would like that bid to be placed anywhere from one second to five seconds, whatever you like. You just set your max bid and we get you the best price we possibly can in the very, very end of the auction. And it hides what your intents are, keeps prices low. We provide price updates. I mean, we have hundreds of features. There's a lot. You can put items into groups and try to get lower prices. And when you win one, we'll cancel the rest of the items in that group. It's really a full featured automated bidding system built out at scale. We, we can place thousands of bids per second and we do it every day. So come by, check us out. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to our support. We typically get back to you within about 30 minutes. And yeah, if you have any questions, I'm always in Discord. I'm happy to help when I can. And yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Winston. And uh, we'll see you on Discord. Thanks. See you, Daniel.